Today, I want to share the unfortunate truth. The reason why certain commanders like Charles Martel and Julius Caesar are never really going to make the cut for being ones that I recommend that you use in the open field in the end game in Rise of Kingdoms. And these insights are really important to understanding why it is that certain commander pairings even work at all. So stick around in this video for very important information about which commanders make it in the end game and which ones simply do not make the cut. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and many of you may be wondering, why is it that you're talking about gold key commanders? But so many of you have asked me about why it is I'm not talking about Charles Martel's double relic more, along with Julius Caesar, by the way, doing some really insane boosts. Now, if you're a newer player to the game, the museum is a critical building you'll get in the end game where you can buff certain commanders, like your gold key commanders, or even Minamoto, and they're even going to add new commanders in. So what I want to accomplish in this video is making sure that we're all on the same page for why it is that certain commanders really make the cut in the end game and others are going to fall short. And if you like Rise of Kingdoms guides dedicated to helping make you a better player in the game, do me a huge favor and smash the like button on this video and consider subscribing to the channel. I made over 2,000 videos dedicated to making you a better player in the game. So thank you for honoring my commitment to your smashing your enemies by smashing that like and subscribe button. But let's start this video with an important insight about why it is that you shouldn't double relic Charles Martel and Julius Caesar. At least I don't think so. Not as of today. And then we'll talk about what makes for just really killer commander pairings and why it is that, again, Charles Martel and Julius Caesar, I don't think are ever going to make the cut for being a top tier commander. So you may be wondering then, Chisco, what is this big insight? Well, for those of you that have been following along with this end game mechanic, the museum, there is two critical currencies that you need. It's the exhibit coins to unlock the opportunity to then get the buff on a commander. So first you use your exhibit coins to unlock the exhibit, then you use your relic coins to get the buff. But there's a problem. And for those of you who have been really astute, you have noticed that the sources of these relic coins is suddenly drying up. Your eyes do not deceive you that in the commonly recurring events for example, uh, this is the civilization-based event. You used to be able to get relic coins in here, but they're gone. Hmm. You still can get exhibit coins, but you can't get the relic coins. And in the Eve of the Crusade, I could have swore that you used to get a lot of relic coins. And now, I don't think they're there anymore. In fact, I just went through Eve of the Crusade. I didn't get any. Even the places where you can buy your relic coins is drying up. If we look over here... At the supply depot, they got rid of the highest value way to obtain these relic coins, which was to get them over time from a $5 bundle. It was super cheap. And the only place that I know where you can consistently get these relic coins is right over here in your daily activities. You get them at the 20 mark and also, I believe, yeah, at the 100 mark. I don't think you get any along the way. Now, you may be wondering, okay, Chiskul, um, I get that relic coins are limited. Why does this matter? Well, the developers have said that more commanders are coming. Uh, they're going to add some Season 2 commanders. So that includes like Alexander the Great and Constantine. They're going to add even the Series 3 commanders. So like Guan Yu is ultimately going to have a museum buff. In fact, they said they're going to add that shortly after they add the Season 2 or Series 2 commanders into the museum. So the sources of your coins is drying up and the need for these coins is going up, which means you should only invest these relic coins in your very best commanders that you're actually using. You shouldn't just dump them into a bunch of commanders just because you can and because those buffs are very good. You need to hoard this currency. So a part of why I'm saying that Caesar and Mehmed are almost certainly not going to be meta is because if you're just getting to KVK Season 4 and beyond where you get this museum, you're going to be like, bro, I don't have nearly enough of these relic coins. And if you've been here for a while, you might feel flush with them now, 
but I don't know that you will be forever, which means you have to focus your investments in the very best commanders, like, for example, definitely Esong. Almost everybody should do Ethelflaed. I'll do this on my main account soon enough. And also commanders like Minamoto are really good and Mehmed is really good, but Julius Caesar and Charles Martel don't make the cut. I have even gone so far as to do my Canyon team, which was a little aggressive. I did Mulan and also Richard the First. Now, with all that said, you might be saying, but Chiskul, double relic Charles Martel just gives so many stats. It's so many stats that the commander could be really good, but I'm gonna make the claim that even if it does make them really good, it doesn't matter because the commander on the whole doesn't do enough for you. A commander like Julius Caesar is good, but on the whole doesn't do enough for you. And this brings us to the second part of the video. What makes for a really good commander pairing anyways? And the secret to a good commander pairing is actually very simple. You want one commander who is a stat monster and you want another commander who's big damage. And that's really it. On top of that, of course, march speed, area of effect damage, um, and also really killer debuffs will make you a higher priority as a commander. But you pair a stat monster with a damage monster and you have your winner. An amplifier with damage. So for example, Nevsky Joan, arguably one of the best pairs in the end game. By the way, if you don't see all these commanders, that's because some of them are only available. In fact, most of them are only available after KVK season three ends. But a commander like Nevsky not only has a debuff and some big damage, but they've got all these crazy stat boosts and you pair with a glass cannon, Joan Prime. And she is just insane damage that fires off repeatedly and she has barely any stats to speak of. You look at the Guan Yu Skippy pairing. The dude has almost no stats at all. They're all attack, in fact. So he has no defensive capability whatsoever. You pair him with a stat monster, and that's Skippy Prime, right? Or I suppose you could do Sargon, um, but I prefer Skippy Prime as I scroll right past him. Bada boom. You look at your archers, and you pair your relatively glass cannon. I mean, he's getting some defensive stats from the museum buffs these days. You pair Esong who is your glass cannon big damage, with your Boudica, who's your stat monster. Unbelievable defense, really good uh, sustain over here from the health gain. And yeah, she does some damage as well, right? But this formula seems to carry. Now, when we look at commanders like Charles Martel and Mehmed, they are amplifiers, classic examples of it. Charles Martel boosts the damage you deal on the active skill. He's got a ton of stats. He's your stat monster. Okay, Julius Caesar, also kind of your stat monster. He doesn't actually have a ton of stats, but he has um, an active skill that is giving you a ton of damage dealt, and also that's where your stats are coming from. Um, but the reason that these amplifiers will always fall by the wayside is, again, not only are you missing the relic currency, but they don't do any big, unique effect. And that's another really critical key to a great endgame pairing. So, for example... If we look at a commander, even like Honda Tadakatsu, who is extremely similar to Mehmed, some people would even make the argument with a double relic, Mehmed might be better. But Mehmed does no utility. None at all. Sure, he is boosting your skill damage dealt, but so is Honda Tadakatsu. And not only that, but Honda does march speed and he has a huge slow effect that applies to the enemy. And for that reason, I think the Honda is probably always going to be slightly better than your Mehmed. If you look at a commander like, heck, even Minamoto, who I would say is super worthy of the double relic, the reason that he becomes super worthy is because he's got a really unique debuff, and this debuff is very, very strong. Plus, in this instance, his single target damage focus is a benefit because now he's actually the meta rally for cavalry. Nevsky with Minamoto double relic is really, really good. So the two reasons why it is that I think that you shouldn't double relic your Charles Martel and your uh, Julius Caesar and some of these other commanders is that not only is the currency limited, but when you compare to the other options that you have, there are others that you would prefer first. And although in a perfect world with infinite currency, which I suppose would require infinite spending, I mean, yeah, you could use Charles Martel with Skippy Prime. Even if you did double relic him, 
you've just got better uses for all the commanders you would pair him with. Well, except for Harold. I mean, I don't think there's all that many uses for him in an end game murder ball. He's just there to do damage and just damage is pretty replaceable. So the reason the thumbnail on this video has noob on Charles Martel is not necessarily because he's particularly bad, but because you have better options and because your currency to invest in those options is super, super limited. But if I were to give you a top three picks right now for where those currencies should go in your museum, in no particular order, it would include Ethelfled, Esong, Minamoto, if you have spent on him and need the cavalry commander in the field, or Mehmed. Those are your top choices. I'm breaking my own rules here by having invested in Canyon, but I'm a Canyon junkie, uh, truly. So uh, even though I hate to admit it, but that's why I've got the double relic on Richard and Mulan. And once the developers then went and said, oh, by the way, many more commanders are coming, I started to realize this currency is so limited Maybe I got to pump the brakes on which commanders I invest in. If you found this video helpful, do me a huge favor and toss that like on the video and consider subscribing. If you're looking for more information about Charles Martel, particularly if you want some talents, I'll have a card in the end screen. And if you're looking for more information about, wait a minute, Minamoto is really good. If you hadn't heard about that, card will be in the end screen for that as well.